Uh, so our next speaker is Ben Bachnixny. Nix <laughs> Sorry, I had it. <laughs> I had it. Oh, I got in my throat. Ben Black Nixty. <laughs> He's the director of development at Mateo. Uh, ben has been augmenting reality ever since he joined Mateo nine years ago. After working for seven years at the headquarters of Munich, he came over to lead the development at the California office of Mateo. Uh, ben holds an MS in computer science and digital media from Furtwagen, Furtwagen. Furtwagen University in Germany. <laughs> Please, uh, a hand for Ben. So guys, um, thanks for sticking around still, and I promise I'm, I'll try to make it short because I'm getting really hungry as well. Um, yeah, I'm from Germany. Some people have almost died pronounced, trying to pronounce my last name, but you can call me Ben whenever you meet me again. That's a bit easier. Um, I'm, I'm going to present um, a few things about the Metayo SDK um, done, um, developed by the company Metayo, um, which I've been working for. Uh, more than nine years now, so we, we are together with our friends from Total Immersion. We are one of the the dinosaurs of the industry, but very like not 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 a thing, um, not extinct. We're still very much alive and and excited about the the industry. But um, yeah, so um, trying to like give you guys some benefits about our SDK. I would say one thing is already our um, our long time. Yeah, doing things and 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 providing other developers with the tools to make augmented reality possible over the course of more than a decade. And in terms of some some special features, so we've seen the AR going from like big computers and um, cameras down to um, web-based AR, and then of course over the last years to small mobile devices. And over the course of time, we've yeah our SDK has changed a lot, branched off again, we combined again. At the moment, we have, we, yeah, came down to the, what we call the Metayo SDK. And some of the key benefits is we offer, in our SDK, we offer image and object recognition. And they are both um, um, developed in-house, so from the early days when we started as a computer vision company. So this is real research focused. So most of our developers, or most of our people actually, are researchers and developers. Um, we're about 100 people strong, and I think they in the Munich office, there's about two thirds are developers and researchers, and so the 2D and 3D image recognition and um, tracking is all completely developed in-house. 3D tracking meaning um, tracking of any kinds of objects and and environments, buildings, anything, which is not flat like a photo. Um, another key benefit um, we we offer is that we include in our SDK our own native renderer. So we also offer uh, together with our SDK, you get a package where you get a Unity plugin. So if you're a Unity developer or you want to take, um, yeah, um, you use the the nice features that Unity comes along with, um, shaders, complex shaders, particles, you can go and use our SDK together with Unity. But if you don't want to pay for the Unity license or you don't want to get into Unity development, you can use our internal renderer. And so there's also no additional cost um, associated with it. Um, another thing, um, key benefit um, that we offer is that we're cross-platform. So if you're an Android developer or iOS developer, if you want to develop for um, a, a Windows desktop computer, if you want to develop for a Mac, it's all possible. Um, and we, yeah, we try to be like as flexible as possible with our licensing to cater for all um, kinds of developers out there. So our SDK, when you download it, it's for free. You can just use it. You download it. You can start it right away. You can even make an application and sell it, get rich with it. Um, we're happy for you. But we, we, we want to have a small watermark in there to yeah, get some bit of the glory, at least. If you don't want that watermark, um, then um, there's also um, a paid version of it. But it's not restricted by any, um, yeah, in terms of any functionality being reduced or whatsoever. Another thing um, I, I think we, we, can, when we can offer well to the community is that we have an extensive um, support system. So we moved away from a while ago from like, um, trying to like, support with one dedicated email address to creating a community out there with our developers. And we opened a developer portal um, about a year and a half ago. And this is where you, if, if you get started with our SDK, this is where you find all our tutorials, all our um, docs and documentations for the functions. This is where you find um, um, 
a Q and A section, and also a help desk where um, developers actively post questions, issues they're having with certain um, implementations or wondering how to do specific AR um, experiences. And of course, our own developers helping there, and also other developers helping there. I think one one key benefit we we, we also have is with our SDKs that it's. It's continuously updated. So actually today is a big day because we just updated our SDK. It's 4.5 now, the, the version of it. And it's, it's driven by the community outside. So what we hear, the feedback we get from the, our help desk, desk is one thing. But the other thing is also because we're a product and a project company, we're also doing what you call lighthouse projects for big clients to get the AR, idea of great AR use cases um, out there. And... By using our own software, like we really know, like if there's any limitations, because we use it like to the max, we we get feedback from our internal developers and and our yeah we are pretty much our best yeah best critics and and trying to push it forward. Um, so yeah, just a brief um, overview of yeah of the architecture, just very simple. So as I said, um, different operating systems: iOS, Android, um, Windows. We dropped Symbian a while ago, and we, yeah, we think we had, we had Windows back then. We're thinking of going back into to um, Windows if it yeah gets more successful. BlackBerry, we're not sure. Depends if it's yeah if it can get some ground again. So we're open to support more platforms, but yeah, of course, depending on what the needs are out there and where the um, the mass of developers um, is going to. Um, so on top of this, you, you will find our native SDK, which pretty much combines our um, our own, track, our own computer vision algorithms. So we have rendering, capturing, tracking, and sensor interface module in there. This is all wrapped, and what you can then access as a developer is the functions from the outside. And then um, it's platform-specific interfaces to programs. So if you go with Android, of course, Java, Arial, and then on the iOS side, um, Objective-C and Windows C++. Um, the RL, I come back to that later, what that RL thing is. That's kind of special because you see it appearing in all those um, um, platforms, which I will get back to uh, um, in a little while. But so even if it's specific to the different um, um, platforms, the calls you make to the SDK, they are the same. So if you want to load a model, if you want to scale a model, if you want to do some, some cool interaction, depending on the angle you're looking at, your tracking target, um, or by the proximity of how, how close you're getting to, um, to a model, you will change that. Those functions, they are all the same. So if you, if, you know, yeah. if you know how to develop in two different languages, then you can use the SDK, because it's, if you learn it in one, it's no, it's no problem to switch over. Um, yeah, and then of course, on top, you get the applications. Um, here's, a, here's a kind of a, a wild overview. So in the center, you have the, our SDK wrapping our own um, um, C++ libraries. And then you can choose, you, you have the, the option to de um, develop native um, iOS applications or native Java applications or native um, Windows applications. Our SDK comes with libraries for all of those. So you can get started via your Eclipse or via object, um, your Xcode, and you can use the SDK. If you're a Unity developer, you can go that route that you go into Unity and load our plugin, where you will find the same um, encapsulated um, C++ libraries, and then from there on, of course, deploy to iOS and to Android. And from today on, we actually support their deploying to macOS and deploying to Windows from Unity as well, with our 4.5 release which happened today. Um, tracking technologies that we offer, so um, of course we have those non-optical ones um, for those geolocation-based scenarios. Um, the, the 2D tracking, we have the classic, we got ID markers, picture markers, and then the, the classic will be markerless, flat picture markers. We have picture detectors, so that continuous visual search engine where you can have a mass amount of people, uh, people images, up to 10,000 on a server, and detect any of those, uh, um, yeah, in real time on the fly. And jump on ahead. And then we got our um, 3D tracking technologies where we have um, our three markless precision tracking, which actually knows about the scale, knows about the exact uh, measurements in around you where you can, if you, want, you need to place models on top of something exactly, and it needs to be scaled correctly, this is what you use. And then we have the, um, our own SLAM approach where if you just want to get started and map um, the world around your way and place uh, models in there, 
this is also possible with the SDK. We also have offer a cloud solution. So if, um, if you want to develop an app shell and you want to frequently update your app without going through um, the, the permission process for iOS, for example, then you can develop an app shell, submit this one time to the App Store, and then through our cloud service continuously update your content. Um, yeah, that's just um, on that visual search, um, the continuous visual search engine, that image recognition, you can do it client-based where you don't need any internet connection, where you have all the images hosted on the device, where we have a limitation to um, 100 images, but if you want to go um, broader, up to 10,000 images, then um, you have the option to use our cloud service for that as well. Air content types. Um, of course, we can display text in 3D and overlay images in 3D space. We also have movie textures, and we also have transparent movie textures. So if you want to have a fire effect where you have some, some flames in front of a trans blue screen background, you can key that out and bring that in um, with transparency with, without having to model a fire, which often looks clunky if you don't have um, all the, um, the processing power for displaying high polygon models. And 3D models, of course, including animations. We have um, we support OBJs, MD2s, FBX, and Colada. And yeah, and we're looking at what what's going to be next. Maybe Google SketchUp, whatever um, the biggest need is out there. As I said, this is our native renderer. If you want to use that, it comes with the SDK. If you prefer to, oh yeah, oh sorry, coming back to shaders, we have diffuse shaders, so baked in lighting into um, into a, an image file. We also offer a reflection shader, also known as environment mapping, and planning to have more um, advanced shaders in the near future. Um, yeah, coming back to Unity, if you, if you, if you need more than our um, native renderer can offer, for example, if you need particles or physics or advanced shading networks, then um, you can go with our Unity plugin, or if you, if you want to use uh, their game mechanics, and then of course you can um, yeah, use everything that Unity has to offer and comes out of the box, which is really nice. Um, okay, getting started with the SDK, w what would you do? The first thing is you, um, you go to the website, you put in your email address, you get an email with a download link, and, and then the best thing to, to do would be to go back online and um, check out our Matteo developer portal. Um, of course, you probably won't do that because you want to, yeah, develop right away. <laughs> so you see what you're gonna, you're gonna like want to see what's in the package. So this is what you get here on the Mac. You get a uh, Mac installer, and then you get this this list here. There's one for Android, one for iOS, one for Unity. Um, let's check out the iOS one because um, we want to like get started here right away without reading any documentation. Um, example, maybe it sounds kind good. Let's. See, let's open this one here. Okay, it's just, yeah, whatever. We don't really know what's, what that is. It sounds good, example. We just try it out. I don't have a device where, um, where I can hook up to the screen with me, but um, so I'm just going to show it in the simulator quickly what's, what's going to happen there. Yeah, so this is what, what's going to open. If you would have a device connected, you would see that on the, on the device in its tutorials. And you can start by clicking on them and then starting them up, and it would fire up right away on your phone. There's links down here, explanations, where, um, that tell you um, what's going to happen with a link to the printout or to an online image so, so you can see what's happening right away. And it also tells you um, in each tutorial what, what you're learning, what you're actually learning to do, what function you learn, functions you're learning to use. Now, it starts, of course, like any good tutorial with Hello World and then um, covers um, the different tracking um, techniques, um, the different models you can use, um, interaction with models, then using instant tracking, using the SLAM approach, um, yeah, being able to to use the visual, visual search engine. So pretty much everything, every, we, we try to get every major um, use case that people have that we de detected f in the community and our de um, from our help desk. We try to get it in there and we're continuously improving because we always hear that it's still not enough. But with our SDK release today, we, we, um, yeah, we added a lot of those there. So we hope, yeah, people will appreciate that. So then we're going back here and we're like, ah, okay, we see here the tutorial one, two, three, until eight, it shows up here. 
um, which is really nice because then we can go in here and actually see how it's done because we got it running already and we can see how it's done here. And then we see some functions, create geometry, and then maybe we get interested and then we remember the, the web portal we should have gone to anyways in the beginning. And, and then we're back here and this is pretty much, yeah, that's um, the best starting point. So here, getting started, where should I start? First, probably it's like you should know, do you want to develop for Android, iOS, you into your Windows? And then depending on which one you go, you get to that specific section and then from there on, it goes through, it tells you how to set up for this specific um, platform and then you can go through the tutorials and get really in-depth knowledge where you walked through what's happening in the tutorial, how is that implemented, why is it implemented? And then um, also, interesting, you can always see on both sides how how it's being how it's being done, and then here um, you will find the API re reference, nice Doxygen documentation for for all the functions in there. And then, as I said, the the help desk, which is a very active um, developer community, which is yeah six minutes ago, someone had a problem with exporting an alpha channel to 3D Max. Yeah, someone answered already. So it's it's very active. It's it's nice. It's yeah. It's good for us to know because we know like what the problems are out there, and we can help, and we see other people helping along. And yeah, it's good to know there's a, a developer community out there um, helping also each other. So this is yeah. This is how you get started. This is pretty much your entry point. From there on, um, yeah, you can go on your own. Like you have you you have the ma the major use cases. You can go through tutorials. You can adjust them. We also have um, a template, an example. If you want to start fresh, if you don't if you don't feel like building up on an existing application, you can always start fresh. You just have to connect those libraries that um, come with the SDK. Not a big deal. And there's there's also a, um, a tutorial for that. But of course, um, anyone can also start right away building up on those um, tutorials. And um, I want to um, introduce two good friends of the Metaio SDK to you. The one is the Toolbox. It's um, it's an iOS application that's available on the App Store for free. And the Toolbox is used to create um, those 3D point clouds that you will need if you wanna if you if you don't want to do 2D tracking but 3D tracking actually tracking real life objects or buildings environments, you you will need that tool and it's for free as well. So you can use that tool, map, get a map, um, create a map for free, export it, import it into your um, SDK project, and yeah, you can you have your own 3D tracking scenario. There's also very easy functions to be able to use our Slammer approach with instant tracking. It's just one um, line of code where you instantly um, get back um, uh, a 3D tracking map. So if you want to get a precise one, you use the tool, um, the toolbox. If you want to really like map something out, if you just want to go for the quick effect of like training an environment in in a few seconds and using that for some um, short-term temporary game scenario or something like that, then you can use the instant map um, function inside the SDK. Um, the next good friend of the Metaio SDK is the the Metaio Creator. So this is our authoring tool, and we've we've yeah we've had this out for a year and a half or two almost now. We had version 2.6 as of today, so today we release, release the new version, and it, it it looks pretty amazing. If you, I don't know if anyone has seen the first version two years ago, it was horrible, but now it's actually it's coming along very nicely, and it's it's. It's one of the tools we use internally for projects. This is our go-to tool, and you you can do a, um, a whole lot with that. So you can use it if you if you're an SDK developer, if you if you're comfortable in 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 your Android or in your Xcode or in your Objective C environment. You can still you um, use the creator, for example, to um, get your tracking configuration. Um, I can show you an, a quick example here. So I decide first, do, do I have um, image tracking or... Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to show you a quick a 3D map because it just looks pretty cool. So this is what, what they told you if, you. if you do that, if you use that toolbox application, you map um, your surroundings or an object, you will get back um, a 3D point cloud and you can load it in the creator 
and actually see what you took there. So th that's the shots you took, that's where you see the points are visualized. And here you can, in 3D space, you can look at your point cloud. And then, of course, you want to position something in there. After all, it's augmented reality, so you can, um, you can import a 3D model and then position it in your point cloud wherever you want to have it. Um, if you want to go for the classic, the, the image for the 2D tracking, what is really nice in, in the crater, it gives you a rating down here. Um, yeah, it's hard to see now. Uh, yes, sorry, it doesn't show up in the resolution here. But below there, it's cut off from the screen, you will get a star rating. So for each image that you load in, it actually it will tell you how good it is um, for tracking. So you get a star rating between one and three stars, it tells you right away, should you go forward and use that for your augmented reality scenario, or should you go looking f look for something else or improve your, um, your tracking image. Then you can, um, you have the option to, th to Look at it straight from the top. Um, put a model on here. You can watch it from, um, from an angle or completely be able to rotate it in, in 3D space. And then you have the option to, um, to position it manually, scale it. You can also have, um, put in um, precise numbers. We have a UI designer where you can um, drag over um, buttons. We can do... Um, your connections to to Facebook and so on. And then now um, the cool thing is from that creator, I told you we have those all those three different platforms and we have that one, what you saw before, the AR, E-L, the RL, it's called Augmented Reality Experience Language. And this is our JavaScript and HTML5 layer that you can um, use to lay it on top of your applications in um, Xcode or in, um, in your Android and environment. So this actually enables you to, to make one application in your creator, put it together in, in that RL language, and then deploy it to all um, all platforms. So what you can do, either you have the option to, uh, after you've um, set up your tracking configuration file, you can export that and use that in your native app. You can also upload um, this experience directly to the cloud, so any, w without having to go th through any um, development environment, you upload to the cloud and anyone can, is able to access it by a QR code or by a direct link or even through our um, Chunayo AR browser platform. But here you can also create an AR app and let's see this one here. It's pretty cool. We can say I want an Android app or an Xcode app. Uh, let's go for an Xcode app and we put in a, um, application name, identifier. We can choose an icon, splash screen and so on. Then choose if you want to go with the watermark or, or without the watermark and And we have our um, Xcode application. Another nice thing is the, the preview option. So you're actually able, before you deploy, and preview it in your, uh, in your camera screen. I don't have a printout, so I'm going to see if this, this here works. Okay, I don't think it's working because I'm on reserve battery power. Oh, there we go. So that, there we got the guy up here. 
It's not that good because it's really like the brightness is really bad. But and, and we got our GUI up here, not very beautifully laid out. I didn't try to make come up with the most beautiful user interface. But you see, this is what we put up here, the um, the interface, and um, our AR scenario. We can watch watch it in the preview. Um, let's export it quickly to um, a desktop application. See if that is possible. Export it to desktop, and let's see in here what we actually got. So here's my iOS application. Let's open this one up. So you see it's a full-on project. And in here you can see this is what, um, the RL, the HTML overlay, which is, um, for the Xcode developers, it's a web um, view, it's an overlay where the HTML5 is being displayed. And then for the macOS, you get a standalone application. Yeah, and here we have, we have the application running. And then let's just see if, if the Xcode project that we exported is doing the same thing. Oh, I'm not trying to hide anything, sorry. Okay, so that's the project I just exported from the from our um, creator application, and yeah, just trying to to make it run here. So that's pretty neat, right? You got this authoring environment, and you, you create you you can create a fairly complex scenario with um, it, where you specify when your model sh should be playing which animation on a click when it appears, and then by just going through export to Android, export to Xcode, export to Mac, you get your application on all those um, platforms. And it's not, it's, not like a, it's, it's not even closed off, you can still access your application and... Oh, it did run out of battery. Yeah, anyway, so we got it running up here, it's up here. And I, now my tracking pattern would be the other side, it would be on the screen, it would be vice versa, but it's not there anymore. Um, I'm, I, I wanted to say three exciting things briefly, one sentence each, but now I don't have the battery for it. But I'm going to tell you the one thing is um, we're offering on all our products a 15% discount um, over the course of AWE. The next exciting thing is we're, having, we're running an international developer contest with four different um, areas, games and, and arts and and to others. This is already started, but it's not too late to sign up. The prices are um, a flight to Europe, to Munich, and a stay there for a few days, and being able, which is the third exciting news, we are also hosting um, an internal um, augmented reality event in Munich and from our, um, from our headquarters. And this is happening in October, and if, if you win the development contest, you're invited to come to that, free entry for that. The flight is covered and the stay. And it's happening around October first time. I'm not sure about the, the date exactly yet, but it's, yeah, you might, you might want to extend your stay even. Yeah, but sorry, I wanted to show on the last slides, but if you go on our website, you will find the, um, the or if you guys are here to, tomorrow, just drop by and yeah, you get the, the flyers and the information, whatever you need. Yeah, sorry for the over not time. Not uh, did anyone have any, any last questions before we break? Did you what? say 15% or 50%? 15, one five. Yeah. Okay. All right, I think everyone's eager to get pizza. Thank you, everyone, for coming and your patience. Um, uh, somebody did ask earlier if my slides would be up. If you go to my uh, handle, uh, Pastriality, on Twitter, I did upload the, my slides to SlideShare. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of the show. Was it yours, Patrick, or should I just leave it here? Oh, this is my, yeah. I put my name on it.